audio. This podcast is called Obsessed. Joseph Scrimshaw and his guest get some secrets off their chest. You should listen. It's the best. Hello and welcome to Obsessed with me, Joseph Scrimshaw. I am sitting in my home with an awesome person, Roxy Stryer. An awesome person. I love that. That's me. Yeah. (laughs) Are you okay with being called an awesome person? I think so. I think it's very an accurate description. Do you you feel it's accurate to you? So you have self confidence. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like uh, it's fair that I call you an awesome person? That we know each other well enough that I have made the assessment that you are indeed awesome. I think that that is fair. You know, maybe a couple more adjectives too, like awesome, incredible, valuable. (laughs) You know, just a a knockout. So any word that would be used to describe a superhero in a comic book title right invincible i think absolutely don't you think that would be a fair assessment of myself (laughs) absolutely (laughs) absolutely we'll see uh we'll see if i change my mind over the course of the podcast i don't think i will oh by the end i have a different verb no i think you're invincible. a different adjective i mean i think you're invincible for sure oh invincible it's the best one i've gotten so far (laughs) excellent so we're doing a little experiment uh this episode i've normally been recording a little bit of an intro with some fun stuff in it and i wanted to experiment with doing that stuff with my guests. So uh, we've been taking questions from listeners about their own obsessions. So I have one today. And Roxy, are you willing to help me answer that question? Yes, but if I butcher it, does that mean you won't do this again? Because I feel bad all- for the future guests, you know, if I make this bad for them. Well, you're going to be awesome and invincible. We Duh. know. Oh, well, then we're set to go. Or we can just change it to butchering. Oh. The awesome butchering Roxy Stryer. That's the best one you've ever <laughs> Just keep coming. Yep. Excellent. So this is the question. It's from a listener named Megan Schaaf. And she says, I'm obsessed with Star Trek, insert live long and prosper hand gesture here, if William Riker could only take one Harry Potter book on the Enterprise with him, which one would he take and why? Ooh. It's challenging, isn't it? Now, do you know Star Trek and Harry Potter? I know Star Trek and Harry Potter. I'm not obsessed with either. Okay. But I do know both of them. Uh, It makes me sad anytime people say insert live long and prosper here because I can't. Oh, you can't do it? I can't. I've tried for years. Yeah. I, I tape myself and I do the whole... That's like, perhaps like to... the thing you're doing is like maybe a Vulcan gang sign? Do, do you see the, what yeah. happens oh. to my... Like it yeah, like your hand fingers. is breaking. Yeah, so I break my fingers for it. <laughs> uh, but that's not what this question is about. Which Harry Potter book? Well, what do you think? Now, I, I, you know, I got to see this question ahead of time. So I was able to oh. give it a little bit of thought myself. So it's not really fair to you. But so let me... you say your smart answer and then I'll just nod and agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yes. if you could audibly nod. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll lay it on you and you can tell me what you think of it. Okay. I think that he would want to bring the Half-Blood Prince because that's the book with the most kissing in it. And Riker likes the sex. Oh, so it's all about the sex. I thought... I think so. What else happens in Half-Blood Prince? That's the one that... It's, it's also about understanding. So Harry learns a little bit more about where Voldemort came through, uh, through the memories in the pen scene. Oh, right, okay. He eventually learns that his book is owned by Snape, so the audience gets a little bit more sympathy towards understanding Snape's perspective. All right, so you think that he cares about the understanding, because I think that's a little, you're going a little far there. I think that <laughs> just with the sex, you had me. Okay. But we got to now bring in what are the other aspects would we care about the violence of the situation. Yeah. And then we can get into some really crazy Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, it's not that violent of a movie, but I, I think that, was this the one with the mirror, too, at the end? Is that, the, I'm, I'm talking about the, mo- the, the movie now. That's the how I mirror know the is the very first movie where the mirror where you stare into it and See, it determines what you want in life this is the butchering but aspect. there's the cabinet that malfoy comes through oh were you okay. thinking about the cabinet yeah. the dumbledore murdering cabinet mm, yeah because i read the first <clears throat> two books i had a hard time because of my dyslexia and then went to, straight to the movies all right the cabinet um uh, i think the kissing was your strongest point okay i think that's where you made the strongest point this so. is an excellent segue into what you what you do, who you are, and what you do, the because kissing? you no, not the, <laughs> huh. no the uh, the the judging and assessing answer weird questions and answers because oh, yeah. that's what you do as a host of TV fights and I screen have junkies, right? So much respect for you that you could just come up with an answer to a question like that, which is awesome, and you're equally awesome. Oh, thank so now you. we're both awesome people sitting here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love that. I love taking weird things that aren't true to life and dissecting them and treating them like the world is going to explode if you don't get an answer for these questions. Right, so, taking really weird questions yeah. and approach them very seriously. Very seriously, like more serious than Donald Trump 
focuses or takes anything in the entire <laughs> election. So I love that. I love that you can take that and really think about it and have a legitimate reason. And that's awesome. Cool. Cool. Can you tell the people listening about a little bit about who you are and what you do? You do a lot of media talking. Yeah, I, I do the talking. <laughs> I, I do that talking thing. So I am Roxy Stryer and I am a host and a producer and a writer. Uh, but I work as a producer over for Maria Menounos' After Buzz Media Group, which also has Popcorn Talk. I host DC Movie News over there. Right. So I do a lot of the DC shows, Flash and Preacher, and I, I watch all of those. I'm a big DC nerd. Uh, so if you had asked me which kind of Suicide Squad character would have wanted to read a Harry Potter book, then we would have been in business. Right yeah, I mean, there. if you want to tell me what Harley's favorite Harry Potter book is, I oh, wouldn't be against that. None of them. None, none of them. them. She doesn't like she reading. Does, no, she doesn't give an F about <laughs> that. No, she does not care. Uh, but so I do that. And then I also am over at Screen Junkies. I host TV fights. Yeah. Where, of course, as we talked about, we talk about situations that would never really happen. Yeah. And we do all different discussions and people fight things and you fight things. Uh, but that's where I am most of the time. I also write. So I try to be funny like you, but not. I'm not quite there. I try to be the funny girl, but you're, you've got me on the funniness. I, I am a funny girl. Uh, <laughs> do what, people tell what you do that you write? often? Uh, in my youth, yes. <laughs> what do I write? Uh, I'm working right now on a pilot. Okay. It's going pretty well, so we'll see. It's uh, with some good people, and I've been writing shorts for a long time. Cool. So mostly things that people will see on screen if they do well. Cool. At some point. You are just a segue machine. You keep providing me the perfect segue to the next part of the podcast. Segue machine. Roxy yeah. Stryer, the segue machine. <laughs> awesome segue machine. Uh, so your obsession is about TV and fits with writing comedy pilots. Your obsession is Friends. My absolute <laughs> obsession to the point that when you asked me to come on this you didn't really need to ask me for what it was just like oh and your obsession is friends yeah. obviously because anybody who's been in a room with me for i don't know 30 seconds knows how much i love friends you bring it up that fast i bring it up so often they might not know that I love Friends if they don't watch Friends, but I will always say something within the first 30 seconds of a conversation about somebody being my lobster or like some some reference. Okay. The wine guy, Paul, the wine. Like I'll say things and people will say, what? And I'll say, oh, never mind, because it's very clear to me quickly that okay. they don't watch. But yeah, it's in my everyday life for sure. Okay, cool, cool. What was the first moment that you became obsessed with it when you were watching it? Or did you get older and realize this has just become a part of my DNA? I used to watch it with my mom. Okay. And I remember I would sit on her bed and we would watch Friends. And the first moment, I don't know what episode it was, but it was something with Phoebe. Okay. And I remember watching Phoebe with my mom and I started hysterically crying. I was laughing so hard. And she <laughs> was laughing so hard. And I don't think I used the word obsessed, but I, I, it was the first time I remember turning to somebody and saying, like, this is my favorite anything. Like, this okay. is my, f I, I don't think I had like a favorite color, a favorite song. I was really yeah. young. So this is my favorite TV show. And that was such a weird thing. Like, wow. Yeah. If somebody says, what's your favorite TV show? My answer is friends. I have an answer to that question. Uh, and I, I was one of those kids who always liked to be fair. So okay. <laughs> it was like I couldn't pick a favorite stuffed animal because it was rude to the other stuffed animals, obviously. <laughs> who is your secret favorite? Stuffed animal? Yeah. Uh, Pink Bear. <laughs> pink bear she, aka love a lot but pink bear was the better name but you yeah. couldn't tell the other bears no because, but you held it in your heart that oh pink that's bear like was very dickish if yeah. you say pink bear i like her best because they can obviously <laughs> hear you so i remember i tried to be an equal opportunist to all of the tv okay. shows uh, and I, I tried to give them a fair shot but in that moment some something phoebe did just really struck a chord in me and i was laughing and she was laughing i said this is my favorite tv show and you're just like fuck it i don't care yeah. if this hurts fraser's feelings I didn't care about Frasier anymore. I couldn't yeah. care. And I love Frasier. And I, no, nope, I don't care if this hurts your feelings at all. I I didn't care if it hurt two guys, a girl, and a pizza place's feelings. <laughs> I did not care. Uh, so how did you express it then when you were young? Did it, is it just a matter that it was a religious experience to watch it? Did you go out and want to get friends things? Did you have friends bed sheets? I did <laughs> if there was such a thing. I didn't have friends bed sheets. But at the time, I had... You, you remember the mouse pads? Now they're not really a thing, but yeah. you could get a customized mouse pad. Oh, so 90s, yeah. And for, for my for my bat mitzvah, <laughs> you could print, you took these pictures in the friends' faces. So like it was a one of those holes and you would put your face, you would get 
five other people, and the six of you would put your faces in all of the friends' holes. Okay. That sounds not what I mean to say, but you understand. The I do. In, in their, their face. face holes. And they would print out the mouse pad for you of you guys as friends. Okay. So I had... I don't know why I just told you that. That's embarrassing. But That's I had great. the friend's mouse pad and um, I would print out different friend's things and kind of just stick them on my wall because at the time that was the cool thing to do in your room. Like right. I just had pieces of paper that I would kind of <laughs> put there and then stickers too. My door was covered in all different stickers, but a lot of different friend's stickers. Uh, so I did love having friend stuff, but I was it, it was not popular at the time amongst people my age so yeah it was, you're a teen i take it yeah, at this point yeah well you said bat mitzvah so right so it was it was one of those things where i felt very adult oh for okay friends and it was an end to conversations with the adults oh wow and so i would use that sometimes like not so smoothly <laughs> you know we would be standing there and they would be talking about something way over my head such as politics politics and i would be like but what about friends? <laughs> so how do you feel about Rachel? And yeah. then, But they would usually have an answer because people loved friends. So yeah. I could transition the conversation and, and be one, one of the big guys. You okay. Know? That's really cool. I want to go back to this mouse pad for a second. Yes. Uh -huh. So where was the physical standy where you could put your face where friends' faces should be? <laughs> so it was in the computer. There was a template. But oh, okay. They, so you didn't actually have to go anywhere. They directed you, like, move your face up an inch, go down an inch. And then based on where the six of you guys were standing, okay. they placed you into it. But that was a booth I had at my bat mitzvah. Like, I hired them because they specialized okay, in, in making facing this. the whole friends stuff. Now, if you are not a huge fan of friends, are the bodies very recognizable without the faces? Does it just look like... We are six random humans. I think that Rachel's haircut Rachel's alone haircut? Is, okay. is recognizable <laughs> enough. But you could tell the 90s clothes, the stuff going on with the six of them together. If it had just been a mouse pad of Rachel and Monica. Yeah. Uh, Boring. Betty and Veronica. Right? Okay. What, what is that? What, <laughs> what am I looking at right now? But because it was all of them together, and I'm not even making a joke, the iconic haircut. Yeah. Everybody could pick out the rachel from a mile away right. that's the rachel that's that's did you ever have or want the rachel i wanted the rachel so <laughs> bad oh my god i wanted the rachel but my mom she went to school for hair and makeup and okay. she used to always like to mess around and do different things and she wouldn't give me the rachel cut but i got her to let me put blonde highlights in oh okay yeah when i was in sixth grade and this so was strictly to be more like rachel Oh, I didn't say that, though, because okay. that's not cool. You can't pretend. I just one day was like, okay, I really need to be more like Rachel. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and finally, I was like, Mom, I just feel like going blonde. You know, it's, I'm just I, I'm in the fun mood. I just got to go blonde. <laughs> and my mom, who was blonde, I'm sure thought, oh, oh she wants to be like me. Aww. Oh, so I went blonde and I did it. But it wasn't the bleach blonde. It was the Rachel blonde. Okay. But I was in sixth grade. Like, who lets their kid? Yeah. Well, a hairdresser, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool, though. It now, was cool. if you had told your mom that you wanted to be like Rachel, why would she have objected? Would she have thought you were, like, too into friends? I also tried to uh, do dress like Rachel. And I remember saying to mo my mom, like, I want to buy that because it's like Rachel. But, but at the time, Rachel wore a lot of very tight, very like belly midriff showing and okay. um, uh, smaller things. And number one, I'm a little, I'm younger. And number two, I was very large. And belly shirts on Rachel did not look quite the same as on me. And I would go to school, I would try to like roll it up a little bit <laughs> or like she had these cute pencil skirt things that she would wear but they were a little shorter with tights and these little heels and my mom would be like no <laughs> so i think that i thought if i had gone to her and said i want to do my hair like rachel okay she would have been like we've we've gone over this right she thought rachel was a bad influence basically yeah right and you got to remember Rachel was the cigarette smoker at times. Oh, that's right. So, oh, so this was just the beginning of the path. The hair was the gateway drug. <coughs> that's that's how it worked with Rachel. So, so you need to be smoking and dating David Schwimmer on and off? She was the one who was having a kid out of wedlock. She was smoking right. the cigarettes. Rachel was bad to the bone. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so it it it's interesting the way it, it informed your relationship with adults when you were not yet an adult. Mm -hmm. When you got to be an adult, you clearly just always liked the show, right? There's never a time where you're like, nah, no, I'm I'm man, I'm friends always. So how has it affected you as an adult? Have you made life decisions based on things you learned in Friends? One of the biggest fights I got in with my roommates is one of them is a huge Friends fan and the other one is not. And I talked to the big Friends fan and I was like, I want our kitchen to be Friends themed. That's what you I want. want. A friends -themed I want kitchen. a Friends themed kitchen. And he was like, yeah absolutely that's what we have to have and it's like like what does that mean is it like a knife that with joey's face on it or purple walls okay um and then there was it all started when i saw this friends poster that said all of these different things on it like just every insider friends joke that you could possibly have was on it and it was like my sandwich and about the lobster and Chandler Bernanke like everything that could have been on there was on it and I was like wow we have to have this poster in the kitchen yeah wait a second our kitchen should be their kitchen <laughs> uh my other roommate just wasn't going for it so I have in a weird way my favorite people have to be friends fans they okay. have to be because that's how i connect with yeah. people but it definitely has made an impact on my adult's life uh and i say this all the time that my, i will yell at my boyfriend because he doesn't understand what i'm saying sometimes because i'll give friends references to explain my feelings right i'll be like listen this is like when Rachel didn't think they were on a break and Ross did and <laughs> Rachel thinks and he'll say i don't understand what you're saying just say it in people terms and i'm like no no I'm going to say it in Friends terms. This is the way humans have always talked. We talk about myth is a way to learn. Right. And Friends is the new myth that teaches us how to live. Right, right. And I, I, all the time, any time, that it, whether it's him or whether it's any, anybody else that I try to communicate with, I always bring it back to Friends. And if you don't watch Friends, obviously that's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. Because I just seem like a crazy person. So... I really think that I get along better with people that do watch Friends because they get my references. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you about a quick reference, and then I want to come back to this yeah. boyfriend business. Uh, <laughs> I know Friends a little bit. What is the lobster reference? Okay. So Phoebe has this theory that the old lobsters walk around in the cage like this, clinking hands. They go like this. They're each uh -huh. other's lobsters. So if somebody's your lobster, it's like your lifelong partner. So if okay. you say to somebody, they're your lobster, that means it's like end game. It's official okay. and you're the old people with the claws. She does this back and forth. <laughs> and it's just romantic. It's just, it, just romantic. Okay. So You can't have a friend lobster no, who walks with you. No, you don't have friend you. lobsters. Okay. The, your lobster is your lobster. And now I guarantee you're going to notice that all over the place like yeah. shirts will say like he's my lobster or, what, okay. or whatnot but rachel and ross are lobsters yes and phoebe knows that and phoebe says that out loud <laughs> and that's when everybody's like oh he's your lobster and that's kind of the thing so if people don't know when i'm talking about oh he's your lobster it's like what he's does he pinch me is he like because he gets <laughs> red in the face when i'm talking about cook something? and eat him yeah cool. it doesn't make sense and I'm such an East Coast person that I don't, I'm like, I don't have time to explain to you. I, I can't do this. I'll talk to my lobster about it. Yeah, exactly. But my lobster doesn't even know he's my lobster. So, you know, it's a hard life. It is. I was going to ask you about dating in particular because the show is so much about dating. And I think a lot of people have maybe gotten ideas about how to date or pitfalls to look uh, out for. Have you ever made a dating decision based on a lesson you've learned from friends, like gotten out of a relationship or into a relationship because of it? That is such an interesting question. Uh, I definitely have compared relationships of mine to see if they're the Rachel and Joey or if they're the <laughs> Rachel and Ross. Okay. And if I believe that it's a Rachel and Joey situation, that's time to get out because you know it's not endgame. Yeah. It, you, you can't waste your life knowing you're with somebody that you're not going to end up with. I just believe that. Not, okay. I, I, I don't think that it's uh, – you can date whoever you want, but if you're going to seriously commit to somebody, it should be because you think that at the end of the day, at the end of life, you could end up with them. Okay. So that's Rachel and Ross, and I and I really had looked at that. But recently – because I've rewatched and I rewatch, and once it went on Netflix, it was the best day of my life, yeah. even though I owned all of them on DVD, of course. But Chandler and Monica 
have been killing it for me recently. <laughs> I always was Rachel and Ross and thinking about my relationship like that. But Chandler and Monica, all of a sudden, it's like, wow, they have more to teach me than Rachel and Ross do. Yeah, I have not watched a lot of Friends. I, I watched a little bit of the era where they were together. We're getting together, Chandler and Monica. And mm. if memory serves, they have a lot of very adult, mature conversations about like, Hey, we're having some problems in this in, with sex. Let's discuss what we want out of sex. Hey, we're having problems with relating to our friends. Let's discuss it. So that's absolutely right. And there was a very similar incident. One time in the show, Chandler, they get in a fight and Chandler thinks that means that they're breaking up because <laughs> Chandler's never been in a serious relationship and a fight means you're breaking up. Right. And I had a similar thing very early on with the guy that I'm with and he, Your potential lobster. My, my potential <laughs> lobster. We'll see. But um, I remember we fought about something that was not that big of a deal and he clearly is not a fighter he's not used to that yeah. and he was like well the nice whatever and it's like wait a second <laughs> you have one fight with somebody and yeah. that doesn't mean it and i felt like a monica in that situation although i felt like chandler many times too who could yeah. be slower with with did you tell him stuff. you're being like chandler yeah and did that help? yeah you're being a chandler no that didn't help <laughs> it didn't help it doesn't typically help when you call somebody out for being a chandler yeah so I understand getting attached to Ross and Rachel as the star-crossed lovers, but are there like th things that have been demonstrated on the show that make you feel like that is evidence of a true romance? Like things that have happened between them? Or is it more just, it's a TV show and the writers say they're star-crossed lovers, so they are? It's, it's really tough because if this relationship was in real life and Rachel was my best friend, no, no. If Ross was my best friend, <laughs> if Ross was my best friend, I would say, God, Ross, you've got to get over her. You, okay. You yeah. Have move, to move the on. fuck on, move Ross. Move the fuck yeah. on, Ross, because she uh, she didn't want you until you, uh, you were with Julie and you were happy with Julie. Like you can't. <laughs> it's not legitimate to say Rachel's name at your wedding with Emily. You're getting married. Like, come on. Emily was great, too. So. I always was rooting for Ross and Rachel watching this, but in real life, I don't know if you would root for these people. Yeah. I'm not sure. Monica and Chandler, you absolutely would root for because they got together and had this incredible and they were fun together. But Ross and Rachel, it's like that, oh my God, it's the worst day. It's amazing. It's the worst. Yeah. And when you, know, I'm sure you've known people that are in relationships like that. It's like, shut up. Either do it or don't do it. But on TV, yeah. that will they, won't they is the best thing that there could it be. It is one of the reasons that I knew, like, on the first date that my wife and I uh, were lobsters, as I, as I now know to say. you got to do the thing when you the, say Okay, I'm doing, right, for, for those listening, I'm doing, like, I feel like I'm at, like, a little camp, like, I'm in grade school. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And I'm doing a little dance. Yeah, the dance, the yes. lobster dance. I, so, yes, in my heart, not knowing what it was, I did a lobster dance because it wasn't the ridiculous up and down drama. And I had been in many relationships where I'd been attracted to people where I was like, oh, it's fiery because there's problems all the time. And like my first date with my wife was like, oh, this is mature and reasonable. Yeah. What do you know? It's not the best example that's set for people. And even as a super fan of the show, I can admit that out loud. Okay. If you try to organize your relationship or dictate your relationship by looking at Ross and Rachel, you're in for a crappy ride yeah because what people forget is that this show is 10 seasons and for 90 percent of it <laughs> they're not together no why would you if somebody is your lobster for 10 years of your life not want to be with them yeah because they're seriously not together for most of it i mean when I say seriously, like, he has another wife. She has other serious relationships. They date people of all different ages. They date other of the friends. Like, not together. Not as in, like, oh, sometimes we sleep over and do the damn thing. Not together isn't <laughs> not together at all. Like, can't, they can't even speak at times. Yeah. If somebody's your life partner, that up and down, that's not healthy. And we know that they get together in the last episode because, you know, she gets off the plane. Right. I don't know what the next 10 years of their relationship looks like. We could just start over again. Yeah, maybe we, they calm down or maybe it's all rocky all the it time. It could be rocky again. So uh, this is not the couple to model yourself yeah. after. It's just the ma most amazing TV couple of all time. But yeah. they're not the ones you should aspire to be. Interesting. I wanted to ask you about interacting with the Friends characters in real life. Now, if you had to be a I roommate with one of them. Yeah, I know. You're a segue machine. <laughs> If okay. you had to live with one of the friends, which friend would you want to live with? 
that would be good to live with in real life. All right, I'm going to go through them. All right. You can't choose Monica because, oh, my God, how annoying would she be? And I'm I'm not the cleanest in the world. Okay. Like I, she, so she would just and get And she's a clean face. freak, right? Yeah, clean freak. You can't choose Ross because he's the most annoying of all of the friends. Right. So you can't go he's with He's just Ross. plain old annoying. Yeah, just really, really annoying. Joey is too messy. Like, he's okay putting spaghetti on his floor. Right. So you don't want to be with somebody who's okay just dropping. You're at <laughs> Joey's place and just dropping spaghetti on the floor. And plus he brings... A lot of women home. Okay. So I think Rachel, Phoebe, and Chandler is what we're down to. Mm, I'm going to have to go Phoebe. Okay. I'm going to have to go Phoebe because she's got cool taste in furniture and she doesn't like Pottery Barn stuff. Right. She's she's got unique taste so she can go out and do her thing. But Phoebe had a roommate for years and nobody even knew she had a roommate. So (laughs) I could have been that roommate and a fly on the wall in Friends. Like people don't, maybe I was the roommate. Oh, oh, wow. I, so I, you think you've secretly been in Friends. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and I watched all of this happen, but wasn't in the drama, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Now, Phoebe plays the guitar and makes up the funny songs, yep. right? Now, would it's that annoy like you? No, no. I love this quality of hers because I think that I could just say some things and she would write that into her song. Like, sometimes I'm walking down the street and I'm like, walking down the pavement, walking <laughs> down the pavement. And, like, I'll just start singing things. Is that a Phoebe song or did you just no, make that up? No, that's me. That's Roxy right now. I'm just brilliant like that. <laughs> Roxy Stryer, brilliant like that. Uh, but Phoebe, Smelly Cat, amazing song. Amazing song. Uh, worst mistake of my life, I was supposed to go see Taylor Swift, who I don't love. Yeah. And I turned down the tickets and... Lisa Kudrow came out on stage and sang Smelly Cat during Taylor Swift's performance. With Taylor Swift, right? With Taylor Swift. Yeah. If I could see Smelly Cat live, I'd pass out. Like, th- that's... Uh, I, like, that's like rock star. Like, uh, rock star throwing status. Throwing things at the stage, throwing your hotel room key at Lisa Kudrow, right? If I ever get married and I could have one band at my wedding, I want her. <laughs> like, that's what I want. I want you, Smelly Cat on repeat. You want Smelly Cat at, at your wedding? Like, first dance? Would you like, try to dance to Smelly Cat? Like, first dance. I'm, I, Smelly Cat is everything to me. Smelly Cat is absolutely everything. Okay, so in for... People who don't know Smelly Cat, it's just a weird... She writes weird songs, and it's a weird song about a smelly cat that became like a thing over the whole course of the show, right? There it goes, smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Smelly cat, smelly cat, it's not your fault. And then it keeps going, smelly, 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 (laughs) smelly. But they, they tried to make this into a cat food jingle. Okay. And it was like Phoebe almost selling out with her old music partner. But she didn't do it. Okay. She, she ended up, you know, it was okay. But Smelly Cat is the one consistent song. There's a lot of other great songs. Yeah. But Smelly Cat is the greatest. Now, is it just, you find it funny because it's from the show that you love and they used it a bunch? Or at this point, do you honestly feel like it is a good song? I honestly, at this point, believe that it's a good song. Like, <laughs> could be a radio hit. But she also does this amazing thing, too, which I love, where she will sing about the people in the room. And just slightly change their name and tell stories when she's not allowed to say what's happening out loud. So when Ross and Rachel had hooked up and he was dating Julie, Phoebe sang that story in front of Julie and changed his name to like something, Rostifer or something. And like machel or whatever and and people don't know but she's really telling life so it's like if you just listen to phoebe okay so you feel there, there's truth and honesty in her music yes and the cat probably was smelly <laughs> i believe that good uh, that would be horrible if after all these years the cat was not smelly that would be really mean she yeah. really defaced that cat like, that's <laughs> have you 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 talk about using friends references have you tried this trick of singing half truths to reveal full truths uh I definitely have pulled the, you know, I have a friend who, that kind of move, I usually don't sing it, but I will, I'll try to explain to people what's going on, but you can't break a promise. Yeah. Because a promise between friends means not having to give a reason. That's something that Phoebe said to Joey at one point. <laughs> but you, you can't break a promise, so if you aren't allowed to say something, you have to find ways to sneak it in, like little hints, and Phoebe's got the best ways. Okay. Maybe I should start singing So yeah, it. it sounds like you have picked up a lot from Phoebe. If you found out that your friend was getting cheated on but you weren't allowed to tell yeah do you think that the best way to inform them would to be with a song <laughs> in real life <laughs> no like what would you if you sat down your friend and you were like 
Okay, there's a guy named Mavid. His name is David. And <laughs> I put somebody, that together. And somebody isn't being faithful to Mavid like that. You don't think he would enjoy that? No. 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 Me neither. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have been in a position in my life where I've had to tell people where I felt like it's my moral duty to make that hard choice of like I know something and I feel my my that this other person a friend should know. And song wouldn't have helped those situations. No. Not even the high notes? Like, <laughs> Especially not the high notes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can do super deep, and I can do falsetto. So I think telling someone in a falsetto that they're being cheated on just seems rude. Yeah. That, uh, maybe, though, if you, I like, in a round, news. you get, get somebody else to come in, too, and, like, harmonize with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe maybe harmonizing. Yeah, mm-hmm. because that harmonizing is peaceful. Yeah. So maybe it would add some peace. Yeah, you know, because the notes well. resolve, at least, even though your relationship is not going to... Oh yeah, unbelievable. Uh, more choices. more friends things in real life. Yes. What would it take in real life for you to get together with five friends and splash around in a fucking fountain? Nothing. It would take absolutely nothing. It would take a phone call. Like if somebody <laughs> called me and was like, "Come to the fountain right now. We're doing the damn thing." Oh my god, I would be so happy. But you want to know what we did in college? The last day of classes, your senior year, we have this thing called fountain run. And you have to run from every fountain. You can run in your group, whatever. And I lived with not not five other people. But fountain four. run? It's called fountain okay. run. And I lived with four people at the time. And you would run from fountain to fountain. And everybody got in like ridiculous outfits. It wasn't like as cute as their black and white friends outfits. But ridiculous outfits. And you would run from fountain to fountain. And like splash up the water and have fun. And I remember at the first fountain I was like, oh my god, nobody understands how much this is my life dream. Like, that was my Patch Adams moment with me, like, <laughs> swimming in the spaghetti pool, me in the fountain with friends, pretending like my life was perfect and everything was splishity splash. Like, yeah. That Were you singing the theme song to yourself? In, in my head. You can't let other people catch on to what you're doing. I so. think you need to open your heart to letting other people love friends. I'll, I'll I think it sounds that. like you've been burned. I, I've been burned. By some people who don't like friends. Never mind what haters say. <laughs> all right, here's another weird question for you, since you're good at them. If all of the friends had superpowers, what would each friend's superpower be? Ooh, okay. Joey would be able to uh, see through things, like undress people with his eyes. <laughs> Just because he's a, a womanizer? Yep, because he's a womanizer. Okay. And, and that's where I think he would pick for himself. I'm going to do what I think that they would be most okay. useful for them. Okay. So. And he would just try to see, would he try to see into people's souls or just see yeah, them naked? I think that he does, he is an understanding person. He likes to know how people are feeling, but sometimes he, he can't quite get there. So, okay. yeah, he can see them naked, but he can also understand what's going on inside. Okay. So, like, what woman's what woman wants meets uh, see you naked. Which isn't a movie. It's just something I created right now. So that's Joey. Okay. Uh, Ross, it would have to be something that, because he cares so much about being cool. Yeah. Like, what's something that people, like, that's so cool? May, he, I think he would be more like more like an Iron Man. Like, he yeah. would have an actual power, but he would have a suit that he could put on. Yeah. He would be like, wow, you're like cool now. Like a super punch and suit or that. Yeah. Because yeah, he wants to be really masculine. He's that kind of classic comedy trope, right? Right, of but he's the, paleontologist, yeah. so people make fun of him. But it, yeah. he's like, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor. So something that was super cool like that. Uh, Chandler would have the power to be invisible <laughs> because there are so many times where you see him, like, slouch down and try to hide Especially with his dad, who is kind of like his mom, and his all of the, okay. the situations that go on. I think he would like to just sometimes disappear, or when people catch him sleeping with Monica, and that's his best friend's sister, and he doesn't want anybody to know he's there, he would disappear then. So he would, he'd have he'd be invisible, man. Okay. So those are the guys. Now moving over to Monica. Monica would either be like. Quicksilver or the Flash, where she could do everything super quickly. So, oh, like yeah. cleaning wise, she would go and she would do all the stuff and it'd be done. Yeah. So if, if she ever walked into somebody's place and it was a mess, she'd be like, boom, 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 done. <laughs> Take the spaghetti off the floor. Yeah. Even though she does enjoy cleaning, because she could, she could also go slowly if she needed to. But sometimes you got company coming yeah. over, you really got to rush. So that would be <laughs> Monica. I do think that Phoebe would be able to fly. Okay. Because she's such a free spirit, and you know she <laughs> she's a free spirit, and she was homeless for a while, and you're never homeless if you can live in the trees. So is that a friend's quote? Nope. <laughs> it's just rock a Roxyism. So I just picture her flying and like living up somewhere. 
in the trees. Somewhere. Okay, yeah, just floating around, yeah. singing songs. Yeah, singing songs. Observing and... whether or not people are having affairs so she can later sing about it. Exactly. She does. She likes to like see everybody's stuff too. <laughs> and then and sometimes she'll write everything down that people are doing and she'll later on like hold it off. They'll they'll get in fights about things, information. They don't know who was right and she'll have the answer, but she won't tell them. Okay. So she likes to be that fly on the wall. She would fly... Rachel kind of is a superhero of itself. Like, everybody is obsessed with Rachel, but she is really selfish. So, and, and she doesn't like that part of herself. So, I think that if she could have a superpower, it would be able to um, get, m- like, money. How, what would a power <laughs> be? Just like, here's money. Uh, she would have money she'd sucking ability. Money sucking abilities. She would call would, money through her hand. She would give some of it away, but she would also spend a lot of it because okay. she's obsessed with the way she looks and wearing things. So her her power would be being incredibly wealthy. Okay. And all together, do you think they'd be a good super team? No, the worst. <laughs> yeah. like, this would be the worst. Fast super cleaner, team. money sucker, <laughs> super puncher, I, like, invisible in, guy. I don't think I picked real powers. Uh, <laughs> no, they would be the worst super team ever. A lot of these characters are incredibly selfish. Yeah. So that doesn't create a good super team. Did you, when you were young and watching it and, and getting the fun sitcom comedy out of them being selfish? Were you aware that these are not good role models? I wasn't aware that these weren't good role models. I wasn't aware there's just about zero diversity on the show. Yeah. Uh, these were not things that you think about as a little kid. You'd look at them, you're like, wow, these guys are having so much fun. They're living amazing lives. They're in love. It's so perfect. It's New York. Everybody lives in massive apartments in New York. Duh. Even the people <laughs> that are struggling and don't have jobs. Yeah. Like, you don't question those things. And as you get older, you hold on to the fact that it's your favorite show. But of course, you do find holes in the fact that, like, never today would we be able to cast these six attractive white people yeah like, that's outrageous come on like sh- it's ridiculous it's ridiculous and like uh, ross dates one asian girl at one point and joey dates one black girl at one point and that's that's what it was like oh well we threw in the diversity there <laughs> like you had 10 seasons yeah you had 10 seasons and those are the two characters i can name <laughs> right now any diversity it's, it's really bad on that show yeah really bad are there any other things looking back that as an adult you're like eh that's a sign of the times. I don't. I I accept it for what it w- is, but I don't like it now. I think that the stuff with Joey today probably wouldn't fly right. with how much of a womanizer he is, with the "how you doing" and just always picking up girls. I think that people would be pissed about that. Although things have gotten so PC, like there are men like that. There yeah. are men, but at the time he was looked at as sexy and cool, and now I think people will be like, "Joey is gross. Oh my god, <laughs> that's how he picks up women. That's so disgusting. He should have a conversation with them first. But back then, I didn't think about it like that. Um, I guess maybe, maybe the stuff with how embarrassed Chandler was of his dad, who was in that show as a woman, and yeah, I don't know if that would happen that way. There have been things I've thought about, and especially Rachel's character, who. Everybody was like, this is the most amazing female character. We are all in love with her. She's kind of a selfish bitch. <laughs> she just is. Yeah. Good character, though, right? Great character, but I didn't know that at the time. So you didn't love her as a character. You loved her as the person, Rachel, and didn't realize that there there was uh, maybe a little bit of an asshole under that great haircut. I remember wanting to be Rachel. Like, it, it, there's a difference now when you're older looking at a character you can love the character, yeah. but you could not aspire to be them, as I do many characters on, I don't know, like Game of Thrones. Yeah. You don't want to be them, but <laughs> no. you're like, oh, I love that character. With Rachel, I remember thinking, like, this is the ideal woman. Why would, did she seem ideal compared to, like, you've talked a bunch about what you got from Phoebe. Uh, obviously, Monica has a bunch of great traits. Why did you want to be Rachel? I think it had to do with her relationship with men. Okay. And how everybody loved Rachel, and even women. Like, when Rachel comes in, she ran out from her wedding, who she and she didn't invite Monica to it, and she goes to Monica and wants Monica's help. Yeah. At the time, I was like, oh, she needs Monica's help. Looking back, are you kidding me? Right. Rachel, Rachel is so far from my favorite character now. She's one of my least favorite characters. But at the time, she was everything to yeah. me. Uh, now, I definitely respect more Phoebe. But at the time, you said it was her rela- relationship with men. men. And that, was, was she just like easygoing and charming with them? Is that what it seemed like? Uh, like she even, just had a way with men? Even with women, 
uh, even with women, like Phoebe was okay living with Rachel and everybody was like, okay with Rachel because she said that way. And yeah, older guys loved her. Younger guys loved her. Even when it turned her birthday, she was so hot and so great. And she did have that way. People in the hospital would stop her and ask her on dates. She just seemed like everybody loved her. So why wouldn't you want to be somebody that okay. everybody loved? Yeah. And when it came to men, yeah, she, of course she's gorgeous. But at the time, I remember thinking that Rachel was the hot girl on the show. And now looking back, it's so funny because I don't know how that changes, but she wasn't the hot girl on the show. There were three gorgeous women on yeah. the show. And now, even now, I I prefer some of the other women's looks to her look. But something about growing up, maybe it was the haircut, maybe it was the tight outfits yeah. or the whatever it was. She was it. She had that it factor. Yeah. I, I don't even know exactly why. Yeah, that's really cool. It's interesting to think about why she spoke to people in the 90s, late 90s, in that really specific way, because she seemed to. Yeah, and it's so interesting because Courtney Cox was originally cast as Rachel, and uh, Jennifer Aniston was cast as Monica. Wow. And when they did the table read, everybody was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is not right. This is not right. Something's not right. Yeah. But I wonder if Courtney Cox had been Rachel if Rachel would have been the it girl still, or if now I would have thought Monica was the it girl, if it had to do with Jennifer Aniston or if it had to do with the character. Yeah, maybe it is something about the way Rachel does seem uh, to have really good connections with people, but she's also needs things from people. And I think maybe there's something really human about, yeah, of course I want to be liked, but I also want people to allow me to be vulnerable and be there to catch me when I fall. When I fall. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, all the characters are vulnerable at some point, but not, I think, kind of the level where the whole show starts off because she's fucked up her own life right she came in as i am i need help i need help and here are my cards and i have nothing and i've got my parents money and she was the biggest the person who needed the most growth the person who was the biggest work in progress uh and maybe that's something i related to as a kid interesting we talked a little bit about kind of how you question friends now uh, and i want to talk a little bit about like what friends would be like if somebody came to you and said I want you to basically make the new version of Friends for 2016. What would it be like? So we touched about it a little bit, um, but definitely we'd have to have some more diversity in there yeah. because it's it's ridiculous. I still think it would be good to have a mix of guys and mix of girls. Um, maybe the coffee shop. You, you can't just like be at the coffee shop all day. You also have to have jobs um, and healthier relationships to aspire to be, but also like messed up ones, but kind of make fun of yourself a little more. Like yeah. it's a messed up relationship. Have the show be aware enough to realize that it's a messed up relationship. Okay, so more um, self-aware. If, yeah. the, if this executive came and said like, no, but I want it to be really real. So I want it to be, I want you to be in it, Roxy. Oh, I'm in it. You're in it. You're not just making it. You're in it. So what, what what do you what character would I be? Or yeah, what you... kind of character would you want to be? And and do you have friends like the friends in real life? I would love to be more like if Phoebe could have been more raunchy hippie because when you think about something like Phoebe, somebody like Phoebe who lost her parents, yeah, like one of them commits suicide, doesn't know where she's from, was living on the streets, was stealing things to eat. She's the funniest character on the show. Yeah, and. If you actually were to tell that story and see the juxtaposition of her being funny but using that humor to cover up for really what's going on dark inside, I feel like that kind of character would be so cool to be. Like, people have real issues, but because it's a sitcom, it's ha-ha, but I would love if there was a reboot of Friends, if it was less sitcom-y and more like Life Hurts but it's also fucking funny sometimes. Okay, so what Um, what would this darker, more honest version of Friends be called? um anti-friends no <laughs> enemies uh friends i mean you know if this came out today it would be called like bffs or like roomies forever like something <laughs> horrible like that uh but I, i'm not sure I, i'm not sure like real real friends real friends oh yeah, yeah that's very something interesting like that. uh and yeah i do have friends like the friends people like i think a lot of people will do that with seinfeld or sex in the city yeah they'll say like I'm the this, I'm whatever, whoever you see yourself as. But whenever I'm looking at my friends, I'm like, oh, they're the Chandler. Okay. That's the Ross. So no, nobody's exactly like one. It's usually more, they're Ross meets 
Chandler or that the this meets that. Okay. Like I I am a Phoebe meets Rachel. Okay. <laughs> and if you're sticking with the women, but um that like that's what I will be described as. Yeah. And the Rachel parts of me I really don't like, and you try to minimize that. And the Phoebe parts of me I really do enjoy. So it's like trying to that struggle with yourself. <laughs> okay. So you could do a show where it is just you. And it's like there's this very old, very weird show called Herman's Head where you there okay. were characters, all of the various competing emotions in Herman's Head were actually played. Yeah, I think it was on Fox for like three episodes. So I'm imagining. So it could just these. be like in your head, in Roxy's head, the battle between Rachel and Phoebe. Yeah, yeah kind of <laughs> like that. Uh, if you had this new reboot of Real Friends, what would the theme song be like? Um, would it still be a peppy, happy thing or would it have... Well, that's Darker the weirdest tones. thing about that song is that the actual lyrics. So no one told you life was gonna be this They're way. They're terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Your those job claps sounds like broke. their hand slaps. Yeah, yeah, but those lyrics, I think you could use the same theme song, but just instead of like, yay, <laughs> it could be like, like, listen, bitch, no one told you that life was gonna be this way, and like, kind of edge it up, make it a little rockier, you know? I would love it if it actually started with the lyrics. Yeah, listen, listen, bitch. bitch. Yeah. No one ever told you it was gonna be this way. Attention, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hi, I'm obsessed co producer Sarah Meyer, and I'm out on the streets of Los Angeles stopping random strangers and seeing if I can get them to talk to me about friends. Have you ever seen the show Friends? Friends? Yeah. What do you mean? It's a TV show. I don't watch TV. Why don't you watch TV? <laughs> I don't know. I killed my TV a long, long time ago. Have you ever seen the show Friends? I've heard people talk about it, but I've never really seen the show. Or anything. My girlfriend watched it. I heard it while I was sleeping. Have you seen Friends? Yes. What do you think about it? I like that show. Yeah. Rachel's beautiful. What's your favorite episode? That one episode where Joey figured out that he actually liked Rachel. Mm -hmm. If you had to be a character, who, who are you? Phoebe, for sure. <laughs> How about you? Definitely Phoebe. <laughs> You're both Phoebe. <laughs> Why? I mean, it's it's a Monday and we're drunk in the park. Um. <laughs> Do you remember the name of Ross's monkey? Marcel. Yeah. Marcel. What would you name a monkey if you had a monkey? What would I name a monkey? Charlie. How about you? So Great boring. name. Oh, okay. I'd name my monkey after you. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> I think. I don't know. What does that mean, relationship-wise? Um, I miss her, and if I had a monkey that I could call Christine, Aww, I would. She moved so away sweet. from me three years ago. Have you and your friends ever gotten together and played in a public fountain? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Are you telling me the truth? Yes. When I was a kid, yes. When I used to go to a park with my family and friends, we used to do that a lot. Yeah. Only once have I been in a public fountain. No playing. I got pulled out of it by, by police. So it didn't really pan out? No. But at least you did it. It was fun, yes. I've been there, yeah. Okay. If there were a sitcom about you and your friends, what would it be like? Oh, gosh. You know, this is interesting because sometimes I think life is a sitcom. Who's writing it? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> that's a big question, babe. <laughs> We're going to move on to our How Obsessed Are You questions. Uh, these are questions that I ask everybody to get a sense of across all the podcasts how obsessed they are with their various topics. Okay. I think you're going to be fairly obsessed, but we'll, we'll find out. We'll see. Do you think about Friends every day? Yeah, because I watch every day. So you, you literally watch every day. Yeah, I watch every night. I watch at least an episode a night. Um, I love the show. Yeah. Even if I'm falling asleep to it. Because I've, I've probably seen every episode like... I don't know, dozens of times. Okay. Um, like to the point where you can quote along pretty much? Yeah, yeah, which which is actually why I think people don't like to watch with me. Okay. Um, because my friends have stopped watching with me. Friends don't watch <laughs> Friends with Friends. Uh, but yeah, I can. I have, to, I have to bite my tongue a lot of the times. But even, but it's 10 seasons. So by the time I get to the end of it, it's like going back to the beginning. Sometimes there'll be things I'm like, oh, I don't even remember that part. Yeah. Uh, rarely, but sometimes. So you do watch it in order. You don't just jump around to the depends, one with whatever. Depends on the year. Depends okay. on the year. Once it came out on Netflix, I was more willing to watch it in order because it literally will just play into the next one and you don't have to hit any of the buttons. Yes. But when I had it on DVD, sometimes I would just pop in the random DVDs. And so it would be like I would watch five episodes from season six 
Um, you know, you would watch 15 through 20, and then I would go and watch season 7 and then season 2. Yeah. Depending on which characters I was feeling, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I want to see Rachel really grow here, and you should skip around. Yeah, okay, interesting. Have you ever had a dream about Friends? Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I have had many dreams about Friends, um, but most, most recently, um, I had a dream about Marcel. Oh, the monkey? Yeah, about Marcel, that I was at the zoo, and Marcel was there, and I was like, I remember just furious. Like, how is this how we're treating Marcel? Marcel was an icon. Like, and I remember I was like really, really pissed. Um, and that was the whole dream. That was like what happened in my dream. I went to the zoo. Marcel was there. I didn't like the way we were treating him and I got pissed. Yeah. Uh, did you do anything in the dream to, to try to get Marcel to escape? I, I didn't try to get him to escape. I remember I, this is this is the Rachel part of me where I was just like really <laughs> rude to some people and was like, how could you? Do you know what this monkey has gone through? Like, yeah. Do you know who this is? Um, so, yeah, it was just rude. Now, rude. if you went to the zoo in real life mm -hmm. and you saw Marcel, you would be willing to tell Marcel that he's your favorite monkey, right? You no longer oh. feel the need as you did when you were a child, and, to be fair. Absolutely. Okay. And like if now... Anytime I see any monkeys that look like Marcel, like if I had a Marcel stuffed animal, buy Pink Bear. Like Pink Bear, <laughs> you were taking the back burner because Marcel is now my favorite stuffed animal. Now, I've never been able to fully verify this, but I did a commercial with a monkey and I was told that it was the monkey from Friends. Are you being serious? I am. I will send you the photo. Oh my I God. I took the photo. Yeah. It was, oh my I, God. there were two monkeys who worked together and they, I was told by the trainers that they were the monkeys that worked together to play Marcel on Friends. They could have been lying to me. Uh, did but, you touch it? Oh, yeah. I had to interact with the monkey. With the monkey. Yeah. You have interacted with the monkey that interacted with David Schwimmer. <laughs> I have interacted with the Schwimmer's and monkey. And I'm interacting with you. Yeah. So I've interacted with the man who interacted with the monkey who interacted with David, David Schwimmer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty awesome, wow. right? Wow, I can't believe I'm sitting yeah, here doing very jittery. Podcast. The monkey was not very professional. It wow. tried. The, the monkey tried. I could see that. But it did pose for a photo, so. Marcel is an ass sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next obsessed question. If you could, would you steal something from the set of Friends? Are you kidding? Yeah, I would steal so many things from the set of Friends. So no moral pause at all? No, no. I, absolutely not, because I deserve it. Okay. Like, I, and not trying to be, you know, earlier on, Awesome Roxy, whatever. Yeah, you're This is not around. me trying to be like, whatever, I deserve it. I deserve it. I have been a really, really, really good fan, and I have put in as many hours to Friends as the people who have worked on Friends have. <laughs> okay. So if they get to take something at the end of the show, then I should be able to take something. Right. You've the spread the, the good word of Friends. Yes. You continue to do so. Yes. You yes. help people define their relationships. Uh, what would you take? Great question. That's a really good one. I'm not... There's a few things that I think I would like to take. There's one dog statue that was Joey and Chandler's that people hated. It's this white, like, dog statue that's hideous. Okay. But it's referenced so much, and it's one of the most, like, famous things on Friends. Right. That I think if I had that in my place, like, I would kiss it every morning. Right. And it would be an instant Friends tester when people walked into your home. They would right. go, like, holy shit, how do you have that? Exactly. Exactly. So that would be a big one. Um, some of their furniture is really famous too. Okay. Like some of their couches and, and stuff. There's there's this one hula girl lamp that Rachel really loves that I th always thought it was kind of cool and I bought a little hula girl lamp but it wasn't as cool. <laughs> but mine said Roxy on it because I got it personalized so you know that was pretty sweet. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I think the dog. Okay, cool. The dog. Would you get a friends related tattoo? No. Is that because you're not a tattoo person? I have one tattoo. I take tattoos very seriously. Okay. And I do think if you know that you want something for your whole life, that it's okay to get it. Like if you, if I knew that I wanted friends for my whole life, but I love friends a lot. Yeah. I don't love friends in the way that I need everybody else who looks at me to be like, oh, friends, that's on her. Okay. So I don't think so. Okay. So it's about the level of love. But it's it's not about the outside perspective. Is it that you wouldn't want to engage in that conversation constantly? No, the conversation would be the best part of yeah. it. Yeah. It's okay. not about the level of love. It's about the type of love. Okay. Like, I think the kind of thing you should put on your body is something that, like, you need to remind yourself of every day or that, like, is really, like, in that kind, that area of your heart. I don't need to remind myself of friends every day. Like You I watch to, it every day. Right. Yeah. And, and, again, with the favorites thing, like, what do you get? What do you get from yeah. friends? You'd have to pick a favorite character. You'd have to pick a favorite quote. I'm definitely not getting any of their faces because, you know, that's 
I think the face tattoos are quite solid. <laughs> you um, wouldn't want all six of them down your arm? Do you, if you're going to go big, go big. <laughs> go big or if go If I home. ever met somebody who had all six of them down their arm, yeah. you know what? Screw that. If they even had one of them or like Gunther, uh-huh. oh my God. I'm all in. Like, How about Marcel? Would you ever get? Would you ever even consider a Marcel tattoo? No, no. But if somebody else had it, that's my lobster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, would you break up? You kind of already answered this. Would you break up with someone who just hated Friends? If they hated it, yeah. yes. It is a big problem when somebody doesn't watch it, but that's not breakup material. Material. If they hated it, I think we have different personalities. Yeah. And, and personalities that don't get along. So yeah, I would. Yeah. And they couldn't be with me because I watch it every day. Right, like, what it would, would they just do? be torture. And, yeah, like well, if we ever lived together, what are they going to do? Like I'm going to watch it every night. I like the idea that it's time for the Friends bag that they have to put over their head while you watch Friends so well, they can just tune it out. Because I'm not going to deal with them saying, I hate this show, I hate this show. Like, th- don't yuck my yum. If yeah. you hate it, then get out of the room. Yeah. And so I think eventually get out of the room would have to lead to lead to we're breaking up. Yeah, get out of the room forever. Forever. Yeah, excellent. This is the final How Obsessed Are You question. This is a weird question I ask it of everybody. If you could not watch Friends without you or someone you love first being punched in the crotch, would you still watch Friends? For being like, I have to get punched in the crotch, or someone you love, or somebody I love has to get punched in the crotch, and then I can watch. Yeah. No, you obviously get punched in the crotch. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, you. No, of course. So you would you would take the punch yourself? Myself. You wouldn't give it to someone you love. No, no, because it's my obsession. That's my like my friend. It's not an obsession anymore. It's an addiction. Okay. And. If you have, I have a problem, I am addicted, so if you have the problem, you have to take the punch in the cross yourself. Okay, now when you say you're addicted, like, what would happen to you if you went a day without watching Friends? Would you feel jittery and nervous? No, a day would be okay, because, you know, like, I'll go camping, so I'll, I'll spend a weekend, but I think if Friends wasn't in my life for a month, okay. like if I had no friends in my life for a month, I really would start to be upset, because I, I do look to it, like... For it's the only thing that guarantees me that I can laugh, that I can like forget about my life for a second and really go into friends world. Because I feel like it's uh, like I am the Flash, and we're currently living on Earth One. That's Earth Two, yeah. and sometimes I break through into Earth Two and I go over there and I get to just like be on that Earth for a second, right? And that's friends. Like that is how it is close... a peek into the alternate reality right. where those people are real. Right. This you is are a Phoebe's roommate, and I am Phoebe's roommate. <laughs> that's how I feel. You have provided me so many wonderful images. In, that was a great answer. You talked about being in the woods, and I imagined you uh, all tucked up in the woods reciting Friends episodes oh, to yeah. yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Like, I can play episodes from beginning to end in my mind. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The, especially the big ones. Like, some of the Thanksgiving episodes I can play from beginning to end in my mind. The finale, the pilot. The ones okay. that The ones that, even without going through, I've still seen, like, each 100 plus times yeah i can play them cool uh so can you make a noise to sum up (laughs) your obsession with friends Um, with peeking into this alternate dimension um no ways to sum up my obsession and be like "Mm." (laughs) like that so yummy (laughs) it sounds like you just ate a hearty stew yeah because I, I tried to channel, like, part of my inner Phoebe. Okay. Like, smelly cat, which is like, mmm, smelly cat. And then also, because it's kind of, like, rad. But yeah. then I'm excited, too, so it's got to, you got to go up, you got to build, like, mmm. It's also a, t- <laughs> a variation of, mmm, like, yum. Okay. Mm. Those are all the reasons. No, oh, those are good. That's a great noise. Thank uh, you so yeah. much. Yeah, because a lot of people go for just the, like, yay type noise which is totally understandable no that is understandable Um, Uh, but i like that you went deep in guttural because friends lives deep inside you yeah it's got anything too high pitched is you you can't do that that'd be like telling your friend that they're getting cheated on in your falsetto you you know (laughs) you got to bring it it's down there in your core you gotta come from your gut cool so i i have been rating people's obsessions out of seven and then just for flavor i'll say out of seven smelly cats how many smelly cats are you obsessed i'm gonna say you are like 6.2 smelly cats obsessed wait but the point two smelly cat is that like you took an arm of a cat <laughs> so no, i'm like six fur. smelly cats uh, and six smelly cats and some fur balls and some fur balls i'll and take point it two fur balls yeah that's better and i bet those don't smell nearly as bad as the whole cat. is the actual cat yeah. no <laughs> i'm sure they're divine uh, you yeah. know i i would agree with that assessment because 
I'm not the tattoo girl also. Right, so. you have a couple stopping points. Yeah, yeah. I do have a couple stopping points. And when it got to blows with the roommate about the kitchen, I just put up the poster but didn't dye, the, didn't paint the walls purple. Okay, you stopped yourself from painting right. the wall. So your your obsession is under control. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Can you uh, plug yourself? Tell people where they can find you on social media. Anything else you want to plug? I definitely can, guys. I'm Roxy Stryer, and I keep it easy for you because you can find me at Roxy Stryer. I'm also over on Screen Junkies on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. doing TV fights, uh, DC Movie News on Popcorn Talk, which is Thursdays at 3, and all over the rest of the interwebs, yes. as Grammy likes to call them. Your Grammy d does still call them the interwebs? The interwebs, yeah, she does. <laughs> well, actually, recently she thought she got hip and she switched over to calling it the Google. Oh, the Google. So she th now she thinks that the internet is the Google. Oh, okay. That yeah. It's just a place where we all search for things. Yeah, she was on, I'm on the Google right now. <laughs> I'm on the Google. All right. Well, you can get on the Google and you can find Roxy Stryer. Here's some uh, quick plugs for Obsessed before we move on to our final questions. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram as at Joseph Scrimshaw. You can follow Obsessed Podcast on Twitter as at Obsessed Podcast. There are two different ways to support Obsessed. You can back us on Patreon and get exclusive bonus episodes every month. For full info on that, you can go to patreon.com slash Joseph Scrimshaw, or you can support all of the podcasts on the Feral Audio Podcast Collective by shopping through our portal. You just go to feralaudio.com, click the Support Our Artist button, and shop on Amazon, and some of the money will go to supporting Feral Audio. What should people buy on Amazon? Should they buy Friends? Oh, d they came out with the Funko Friends. Oh, the, the Funko yeah, Friends. Thing, so. Really? Yeah. Is Funko anybody Friends. but Rachel distinctive as a Funko Pop? Yeah, because Can you because really each, recognize Ross? They each have a thing, like Monica's got her chef outfit on. Okay. And so Ross, I believe, has Marcel or something like that. Oh, what? They, they, have, okay. they all have things that make them more distinct. Okay, then please go to feralaudio.com, go through our portal, and buy Ross with Marcel the monkey on his <laughs> shoulder and bobble his head. All right, so here are the, the final questions. They don't have anything to do with your obsession, but they can if they want. You're just weird questions. Oh, cool. If you lost your hand and had to have it replaced with another object, what object would you want it replaced with? Oh. Well, uh, that wasn't the friend's noise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would I have it replaced with? It's got to be something that you can grab things. Yeah, so you want something grabby. Maybe a crab. A crab, not a lobster? <laughs> Oh, uh, that would have been better. Maybe a lobster. <laughs> a like lobster. It, because, oh, here's why a lobster would be great. Okay. I'm very short. I have, as short as I am, I have even shorter arms. Like, okay. my arms are really, really small. And when I pull up to things uh, in the car and you have oh, to get the ticket, yeah. I have to get out of my fucking car. You can't even Every, drive close enough. My, my, if I drive close enough, my mirror will hit it. Okay. That's how short my arms are. Every time I have to get out of cars. <laughs> you know how much that is crippling to life. Yeah, so it's a pain in the butt. If I had a lobster, not, I'm not just talking about the claw, the, the whole, whole lobster. The whole lobster. It gives you some length. gives me length and pinchers. And you can hold two things. Yes. And I still have my other hand, so I can be like, you know, soft and easier with that one. Like if I have to apply makeup or like touch somebody's face. For listeners, but, Roxy stroked her own face to demonstrate how hands worked. It yes, was that, very beautiful. That, that is what I did. <laughs> uh, but if I had the pincher in this one too, like you, you can't get mad at somebody who has a lobster as a hand if they yeah. accidentally pinch you. Yeah, so, you don't want to get lobster slapped. Right, because no, and also like that's a disability. You know, you're not going to be like, oh my God, you lobstered me, like yeah. you bitch. So then the people that you disliked, you pinch them. But Just it also gives you length, and also I can get the tickets and the parking. It's definitely a lobster. Perfect. That's my lobster. Perfect. Uh, this kind of goes with the next question. You are a Segway monster. If yeah. you could command an army of animals with your mind, <laughs> what animal would you command? Uh, you can't pick a lobster for no, this one, though. Because, no. like, you, oh, what army do you lead? The lobsters? Like, you're lame as <laughs> fuck. Like, you can't lead the uh, lobsters. But if I command an army... This seems like a lame answer at first, mm -hmm. but I think what you would have to pick is dogs. Oh, yeah. And here's why. Dog is a man's best friend. Dogs are in more homes than any other right. animal there are. So if you could command all the dogs, you could infiltrate all of the homes. They're sleeper agents. Yeah, they're sleeper agents. Um, and then there's a lot of pieces of shit out there, like really bad people. So you could use those dogs to like really get at those people. You could get a lot done yeah. if you commanded the army of dogs. In different levels of things. Like, yeah, you could have a dog just attack someone. You could have a dog look at something. But if there's just somebody who wronged you, you could just communicate with your dog 
dog and just say, go shit in their bed. Yeah, that. And also, if there's somebody who's on the edge of being bad and you just thought they were somebody who, like, maybe needed to be able to express love in some way, you could get a dog in there and give them a dog. Oh, okay. And then they could find love. And, and you know, like, maybe if we took Hitler and we just brought a bunch <laughs> of puppies there, then maybe we would have been okay. You know, my people, like, we really should have given them a bunch of puppies and that would have been a better move. Yeah, that's a really... I don't a... mean that. I do not mean that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a general just gamer to put over the whole podcast. Uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's a beautiful picture. Yeah, the dogs. All of the puppies. All the dogs. Curing the ills of the world. Do you have one? A puppy? No. A dog? No, the animal that you would... Oh, squirrels. I like squirrels a lot. Uh, oh, so I would, would I would uh, gently request them to be my friends and to spend more time with me. I have a friend who has a best friend that's a squirrel. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> he went to college. He did a lot of drugs, and his best friend is a squirrel now. A, a real a, squirrel or a, a squirrel a, that he sees a, because of the drugs? A real – well, I've never seen him. <laughs> so that's a great question, but he claims his best friend is a squirrel. Awesome. This is the final question for everyone on the podcast. What is happiness? That's so beautiful. Uh, <laughs> what is happiness? Happiness is, I guess, in spite of seeing the world for what it is, finding the positive things enough to be able to smile and carry on. Okay, so just like the theme song, acknowledge the darkness, but embrace the happiness. Happiness is when no one told you that life was going to be this way. (laughs) But you're able to play in a fountain anyway. <laughs> that is an awesome answer. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is our podcast. You've been listening to Obsessed. Joseph Scrimshaw and his guest shared some stories with the rest. Rate five stars if you're impressed. Listen, bitch. No one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke, you're broke, and your love life's DOA. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, but I'll be there for you. When the rain starts to pour, I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me too.